Welcome to tutorial 16 in the practical RF design tutorial series. I am Dr. Prakash Sangaran from InnoWave. In this tutorial series, we will learn the complete design and optimization guide for a 4G and 5G antenna. In the part 1 of this tutorial, which is part 15 of practical RF design with Keysight ADS tutorial series, we learnt antenna introduction, antenna selection and PIFA antenna design. This is a continuation of part 15, so if you haven't watched part 15, please watch it first. In part 16, we will learn how to optimize the PIFA antenna using Keysight ADS. We are going to design a meandered PIFA antenna for this tutorial. We will build the meandered PIFA and optimize the PIFA to meet our design goals. Layout optimization is called parametric EM simulation in ADS. There are two ways to do a parametric EM simulation in Keysight ADS. The first method is to create a schematic using T lines iPhone micro strip palette components, followed by creating the layout from the schematic. The second method is to create the layout in the ADS layout straight away. We will use the first method for this tutorial. The first step of creating and optimizing an antenna using the method 1 is to draw the antenna shape you want to design in the ADS schematic using components from T-Lines iPhone MicroStrip component palette. Let's do this now. I am launching a new schematic. Our meandered PIFA antenna will be built here. The next step is to navigate to the T lines hyphen microstrip component palette. You can find many types of microstrip lines here. It will help create unique antenna shape design we want. We started by placing M lock onto the schematic. and then MCON followed by MLIN. We can copy and paste the same shape and repeat the same step. After you copy, before pasting onto the schematic, you also may need to rotate the microstrip lines so they will have the correct angle for placement. Currently, I am creating the horizontal meandering element of the PIFA antenna. Since it's meandered, it won't be the exact quarter wave in length as explained in part 15 of this tutorial. This is because the meander line will have a shorter length than a straight line. I will repeat the steps of copying and pasting MLOG, MCON and MLIN until the shape is completely done. While I do that, let me explain about the meandered PIFA. The horizontal line of the PIFA is not straight but instead follows a meandered or zigzag pattern. This increases the electrical length of the antenna without significantly increasing its physical size. Like a traditional PIFA, the meandered PIFA also includes a ground plane, a shorting pin and a feed line. We are placing a new shape called MT now. This new shape also can be found at the T-Lines hyphen microstrip component palette.
the meandering of the radiating element effectively lowers the resonant frequency allowing for more compact design. This is particularly useful for application requiring a small form factor. The meandered design can affect the bandwidth and efficiency of the antenna. The copy and paste process repeats to accelerate the design work. With this, the meandered horizontal line creation is completed. Now we have to create the shorting pin, ground plane and also the feed of the PIFA antenna. Again, copy and paste process is used to create the feed, shorting pin and the ground plane. Optimizing the meandering pattern can help achieve desired performance metrics. We can also place the pins in the ADS schematic. We have to place both the positive and negative pins in the schematic. The positive pin goes to the feed, whereas the negative pin goes to the ground plane. These are the ground plane connected to the shorting pins. With this, the placement of the PIFA antenna components with microstrip components has been completed. After placing the microstrip components, we connect them together using wire. I did this exercise in one go because I tried this shape before. However, when you try a unique shape, you might have to try a few times before getting the correct shape. Let's continue our meandered PIFA story while this exercise is getting done. The primary advantage of meandering the radiating element is the reduction in physical size while maintaining or achieving the desired resonant frequency. Meandering can improve impedance matching and radiation efficiency, especially in confined spaces. The meandering pattern provides flexibility in design, allowing for better integration into complex device architectures. We have finished connecting microstrip lines using wire. As you can see, the component tags of microstrip lines collide with each other. We must separate the component tags because we will edit the component parameters later. Editing becomes easier when you clearly see the component stacks. Four T-lines hyphen microstrip palette components were used in the design. Those are MLIN, MLOG, MCON and MT underscore ADS. MLIN is a basic microstrip line, which is a straight line with a width and length. It has two connection points at both ends. MLOG is a microstrip open circuited stub with an open end on one side and connection point on the other. Similar to MLIN, we can define the width and length of the MLOG. The MCON is a 90 degree microstrip band with two connection points and a width to be defined. The MT is a microstrip T junction. We can set three different widths for three different connection points on the MT. We have successfully separated the components taxes. 
The next step is to parameterize the design. To do that, let's first create or define the parameters we want to use in the design. To create parameters, we have to go to File, Design Parameters and click on Cell Parameter tab. Here, we can enter the parameters you want to use in the design one by one. It could be a lengthy process depending on the complexity of the design. While I'm creating new parameters for my design, let's talk about how to create new parameters. Here are the most important thing we need to define in the cell parameter tab. By default, the parameter name tab will be empty when you start defining the parameter for the first time. You need to define the parameter here by giving it a name. For the value type, you can select the parameter to be real, integer, complex or string. For our design, we leave it as real. The parameter type or unit is optional. So you can either leave it unitless or assign a unit to it. The unit can be length, frequency, time, angle and etc. Since it's optional, we will leave it unitless for our design. The default value contains the default value of this parameter. It is recommended that the unit be inserted together with the default value in this box. The default value unit can be in mil, mm, cm and etc. We have to select the display parameter on the schematic option to display these parameters on the schematic. We also need to select the optimizable option to allow these parameters to be optimized. Allow statistical distribution is selected by default, but this option is only needed if you intend to do post-production tuning for these parameters during yield analysis. The parameters I am optimizing for meandered PFA antenna are only two kinds. Those are width and length. For simplicity, I define the width as x and the length as y. A unique number is given at the end of the x and y to differentiate different elements of the meandered PIFA. Since it's a repetition, I will fast forward this section since I believe you would have had enough demonstration of the process of creating new parameters for your design. Thank you for watching tutorial 16 of the practical RF design tutorial series. Please watch tutorial 17 to learn the continuation of PIFA antenna optimization process using Keysight ADS. For inquiries, Please email pragash at innovave.co or visit www.innovave.co.